So you finally gathered the Dragon Balls and wished for enough money to build a colony on Mars. Quick question, have you given much thought to where on Mars specifically? It's a goddamn planet. Saying we're going to Mars is a bit like saying we're going to Africa. Where? That's not very specific. What if I want to send you a cardboard box filled with bees? How will I know where to send it? Might be helpful to touch on why we're even thinking of going in the first place, because that's potentially non obvious. After all, if all you wanted was to stare at a red surface undulating into the distance, you could just run a Google image search for Gordon Ramsay's forehead. Well, humans would be better at doing Mars science than the robotic rovers we've got there, but not by a large enough amount to make it worth sending a whole group of shitting, pissing, farting dudes all the way over there. Have you any idea how much this is going to cost? No, the robots are doing okay at the science already. If we're sending humans, that means we're going there to colonise, so wherever we go needs to be the ideal place for habitation. It's going to be hard. Snickers bars don't grow on trees over there amongst other problems. Anyway, those orbiters and landers and rovers and even helicopter drones we flew over there have been doing something useful. Fair enough, the spirit rover drew a dick on the floor and then died, but it did do those two things about six years apart and managed to gather huge amounts of data during the intervening time. And the same goes for pretty much everything else we've sent there, all the way back to the first orbit emissions in 1971, and most recently NASA's Perseverance rover and China's Tianwen-1 mission, both of which rocked up there in 2021. So based on the last few decades of electronic fannying about, here are the relevant facts on the ground. The atmosphere on Mars is about one half of one percent of the Earth's atmospheric pressure at sea level, so while there is an atmosphere, it's weaker than Quentin Tarantino's resistance to licking feet. It's just the right amount of atmosphere to be a problem with heating up our spaceship when we're trying to deorbit onto the surface, but also not really helping us slow down all that much, so worst of both worlds, great job Mars. The atmosphere is also 95% carbon dioxide, which is not tremendously helpful for anything other than letting you know that you're suffocating to death while you're suffocating to death. Despite being first further from the sun than Earth, the temperature can actually get above 30 degrees Celsius in the summertime at the equator, but it drops to below negative 100 in other places and times, so temperature control will be something to keep in mind for a colony. There's no magnetosphere there either, so radiation's gonna be a little bit spicy. Mars has this cool thing where the northern and southern hemispheres are super different from each other. The north is just one giant ancient seabed, so it's really flat and low-lying, whereas the south is the opposite, it's like jagged highlands. Mars also has ice caps, and despite the ice caps expanding with CO2 ice in the winter and sublimating that CO2 ice into gas again in the summer, the ice that's permanently there is almost entirely water, which is as hugely useful as you might imagine. We're not going to have to send Bear Grylls there to drink his piss the whole time, we can actually use the water that's there because there is some. There's actually also water ice in other places, just locked under the soil, so we don't necessarily even need to set up by the ice caps. There's a few other notable regions I should just mention while I'm going over them. First off, there's the ancient craters, these big giant ones. The big one's the Hellas Planitia, and the smaller one is the Argaia Planitia. Now I'm probably butchering the way these fucking things are pronounced. The Argaia Planitia kind of looks like a smiley face, which is pretty cool. These are basically the only two low-lying places in the entire southern hemisphere. Well, other than the giant canyon, I should also mention. That's Valles Marid... Marid... Marinara? Marinet... Mar How the fuck do you pronounce that? Marineris. This thing's about half the size of my wiener! Got him. You know, I was going to try and make a joke about it looking phallic, but I couldn't even really see a wiener in this. Although, I could see Patrick doing the splits from the Spongebob movie, especially if his ass cheeks became really upsettingly defined, so I enjoy never being able to unsee that. There's these three giant extinct volcanoes in the high-altitude Tharsis region in Mars's western hemisphere, and nearby that there's Olympus Mons, which is famously the biggest mountain in the entire solar system. It's wider than entire countries, and it arches out of the atmosphere far enough that if you were up in orbit you could probably wipe your ass on it as you were flying by. Listen, I know these all just come down to variations of red dusty landscape, but you're just a variation of hominids staring at a technology rectangle and I still think you're interesting, so what do we need? We need somewhere with water, we need somewhere as deep into the atmosphere as possible, because then we're shielded from radiation and micrometeorites and whatever. We might want to be as close to the equator as possible for sunlight, provided we don't use nuclear power instead. Also, that would potentially be slightly easier from an orbital mechanics perspective to land there, but whatever, that might be negligible. It's also slightly warmer, which would make equipment maintenance and life support easier for a colony. Regardless of where we end up, it's, it's going to be difficult in some way, shape or form. Mars is super hostile, there's no breathable air, it's cold as shit. The place is currently populated entirely by robots, there's radiation everywhere. Radiation is particularly bad for Mars colonies, which is why so many illustrations show them being covered in dirt for protection. If you don't think solar radiation 
conditions that bad. Remember, the Earth has an ozone layer, and a magnetosphere, and a dense atmosphere, and with this in mind, still, if you take a summer trip to the Sahara and fall asleep with your gooch pointed directly at the sun, by that evening you will be begging for the sweet embrace of death. Take all the protective layers off of Earth and that's what Mars is dealing with, which is why you want as many layers of protection between you and the sun as you can get your hands on. Anyway, time for the big question. Where the fuck are we dropping? <laughs> Where will humanity put its first colony? Well, wanting to be as deep into the atmosphere as possible rules out almost all of the southern hemisphere immediately. Flatter terrain will be vastly easier to build on and land on, especially if we're going there in something tall and thin trying to land on its tail like SpaceX's Starship vehicle. So yeah, all of this makes the southern hemisphere not look very appealing. While landing directly on the poles would be fantastic for the sake of having easily available water, the poles also experience the deepest cold and the least sunlight, meaning it's going to be hardest to maintain the power needed to do what we need to do, including making sure our guys don't fucking freeze to death. Since it's also potentially slightly easier to land near the equator for orbital mechanics reasons, somewhere in the flat northern mid-latitudes, somewhere where the water ice is close as possible whilst also being kinda near the equator, would probably be a good place. If I were a betting guy, and I am, I'm in crippling debt, I'd say the best place is around the Arcadia Planitia, a place so flat and lifeless that the first explorers walking around will be the most exciting thing to happen there in the last four billion years. It's in the right region, uh, it's sort of northwest of Olympus Mons, and the whole area is flatter than the top of Will Smith's head back in the 90s when he had that haircut that made him look like a Roblox character that gained sentience. Crucially, in the Arcadia Planitia, there's a few craters dotted around, and those craters have tinier craters surrounding them, where bit of the debris flung up from the impact that made the main craters subsequently hit the ground, and those smaller craters have smooth edges. Not the kind of smooth edging you do to yourself when you can't fall asleep, but smooth edges caused by the initial sharp crater edge having water in it which then sublimated when it was exposed to the atmosphere, and that caused the edge of the crater to collapse. So in other words, this is a sign of fucking water baby! What else do you want? Genuine sign of H2O, it's right fucking there. So yeah, that's the place. If you want the world's most expensive case of radiation sickness, feel free to tell the locals I sent you. Anyway, I hope this is a useful guide. Maybe SpaceX will get me on the horn when they're looking for the next holiday destinations. Like and subscribe if you want to. Catch you in the next one. Xandros over and out.